Hi, this is Sarah, the Stitching Mommy, and it's Monday, April 19th, 2021, and I'm here to give you a Stitch Mania um, plans and voting opportunity. So this year, my Stitch Mania um, plans are going to involve all of my mirabilias. So traditionally, Stitch Mania is a group that, or an event that um, involves a lot of new starts in the month of May. So it's like manic, basically, Stitch Mania. And I have decided, because I've been focusing so much on full coverages lately with the, um, the enjoyment that they can be with Pattern Keeper, um, I have neglected my Fancy Lady collection, and I have quite a few of them. So I thought, what better t way to correct that problem than by spending the month of May working on all of my Mirabilias. So I do have other quote unquote fancy ladies um, of other brands that will not be coming out. I have a couple Joan Elliott's, several Lavender and Laces, um, some Nora Corbett's. I will not be bringing those out. I will only be doing the ones that actually say Mirabilia on the label. So I have nine Mirabilia projects currently started and I will be starting a 10th one so that I have, um, so I can evenly di evenly um, distribute them throughout the month of May. So I'll do three days, three days on each project for a total of 10 projects. And then my bonus day on the 31st will be whatever else I feel like working on, possibly finishing up Quick Stitch Iris if I have, if I'm this close to a finish, I wanna you know give it a day, or if I wanna start working on my Cozy Cafe Club from the Frosted Pumpkin, because that release will come out on March, uh, May 25th, part three. So there's a few things that I could do with that 31st day. I'll, I'll leave that open at this point. Um, potentially, I could have rearranged things throughout the month to, that I'll need that last day to, to finish a rotation on one of these Mirabilias. So I'm leaving that last day open. And for all intents and purposes, each project will get three days. So first off, I'll show you the ones I have started because I figured I want you guys to vote for my new project, which I'll start on the first. Um, I have seven Mirabilias that I have kitted um, with fabric. So they're ready to start. And I'm gonna let you decide because I don't really have an opinion <laughs> at this point. Um, so you guys can pick and I'll give you the week to pick um, to be voting. So in the comments, you'll give me your first choice what you would what you would choose um, of my kitted projects but in order to know and give you a more um, well-informed decision I thought I should share you share with you the ones that I've already started so then you can kind of know if there's any gaps that need to be filled in or oh you have too many of this stylist do one of these you know things like that so I thought I would share all of it so this is stitch mania mirabilia mania um let's let's get going so <clears throat> I'm planning to do these with my new start on the first, and then after that, I'll do all the rest of my Mirabilia's alphabetical, just because I figured I could spin a wheel, but I'll just do alphabetical. So first up, I have Adia, the Garden Fairy, and she has a lot of charms here. Um, I've got just a little bit of her top area done, and her wing, one wing, and her head. And there's a lot of confetti in, in her head and hair, and I think that's what has stalled me on this one a little bit. So maybe maybe this rotation, I can get past some of that and move on to something else in this area. So this one still has a lot of the beads and Krynek in the bag. Some of them I have started to take out and put in master sets, but I'm not completely done with that project yet. <laughs> this one still has everything in the bag with it. This is on probably the called for linen, which is 32 count dirty, possibly. I didn't keep very good records back when I started most of these, so some of them will be um, estimates of what it is. So this is my starting point on Adia the Garden Fairy. So it'll be fun to put some more love into her. The top portion of this wing is all the way finished because my mom wanted to see what that looked like one time when I was visiting her house. So I could work on this wing. I could fill in some beads even on her hair or start working more on her skin or dress. So those are some, some areas that I might work on. 
that's 80th. All of these are on 32 count, two over two. I like that for my Mirabilia's. It gives a nice tight X, the equivalent of 16 count um, stitches, but still enough room to let the beads have space um, to breathe as long as they're on, on. When you attach a bead with a half stitch, the actual bead ends up diagonally, which then fits nicely um, in the square um, of 16 count. It also, it might be just that much better for beads on 14 slash 28 over two, but I do like the way my stitches look on 32. So that's what all of these are. My next one alphabetically is Ashley's Roses. And this is a really pretty one. There are a few beads, um, but I think mostly stitching. And I am still up here in the tree, I guess you could say. And I really want to get down to her, but I, I've been trying to be a good girl. And um, I started this one in the top corner um, up here, I guess, um, because I because it was an obvious corner. A lot of the fancy ladies don't have a border, so I usually start in the middle and work to their head and then come back down. This one I started at the top. I think I'm close to her hand to come down here, but so I may get to her face and then finish the border or the, the top portion there. I'm not sure. Let's see. Yes, this is it. This one is on this is called for is cream linen, which may be what this is. Because it's not white, it's a little bit lighter than that. So it's either cream or antique white or something of that nature. So here is my start on Ashley's Roses. And I don't mind the green, um, like single strands but this these patches are a little bit tricky and I think it's maybe because of the symbols they use makes it hard to see where where the colors go and some of the colors are very similar to each other um but I think I'm getting close to where I can um work on her hand a little bit so I might I might dip into that just to get me motivated a little bit more on this piece so because it's kind of lingered in this state for far too long and it would be nice to get an, a Mirabilia finished sooner than later. And a lot of these are nowhere near finished. So maybe by looking at all of these, maybe I'll see which one is a good candidate to hone in on and get it done. The next one is Garden Prelude. And this is one of the more recent starts. And I am uh, subbing in the, the hair and water lilies I'm replacing with some fancy floss that I had in my stash because they're just the colors of the flowers and I figured that could be anything so I have let's see color and cotton and Victorian motto are some of the colors the colors that I'm going to use for the flowers instead of the called for everything else I'm doing as charted and the fabric is 32 count Wedgwood Lugana by color and cotton it's a really pretty blue gray and here's where this one is now I think if I fold it over the color will stay a little truer so this one I last time I worked on this I worked on the violin and got that pretty much finished so she's pretty I could work more on the archway um, since that is at the top I could work more on her arms so she's not like ghost playing <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure some of these I'll work a little bit on boring sections and a little bit on fun sections. Since I'm giving each one three days, I might have time to, to play around and move move around different places. So this is a fun fabric, color and cotton fabric. All right, the next one I believe alphabetically is Lady of the Flag. And this is one that I, um, I've owned for probably 20 years because I this is the original one. That I bought just at a random LNS. It was not rare at the time, probably very soon after 9 11, um, which is what this is memorializing. And um, in 20, 2001 is when it was made. Um, it was probably soon after that I bought this at a little shop in Corvallis, Oregon, which I think I 
can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> they have an online presence now if you want to look around at their stuff. But um, at the time, this was just a random chart in the store and I picked it up because I thought it was pretty and never got around to starting it until a couple years ago. So um, this one I'm doing on some Stony Point Witchel Linen, which I don't have anything to hold behind it this time. Usually I have my binder up here. It's a very see-through linen, but it's pretty. It's a nice gray green. And I, um, when I got this color, I decided, oh, that will be perfect for Lady of the Flag because I think all the yellows in her dress will stand out on this quite a bit. And so that's what in incentivized me to start it. I think I found a lot of, uh, not a lot, but a lot, L like, on eBay, there were like three or four different fabrics, and this was one of them. And uh, it ended up working really well for this fa this pattern. So I do need to work more on the flag, which I think will be the next thing, because her head is finished, her torch is finished. Um, so now I need to work more in the flag. So that's probably what I will do. I started in the middle and worked my way up the flagpole to get to the top area, um, but I am pinning it shut because it's this... A stiff fabric so I like to roll it up from the bottom and hold it there and it's nice at least at the beginning of a project to force <laughs> the roll to stay shut um, because then I'm not constantly re-rolling it to get it tight in my hand um, so sometimes I can get rid of that eventually um, and it stays put but at the beginning it's really nice to have something so there's that one probably work on the flag and and then I have Roses of Province which is a fairly recent start as well and I think I even worked on this this year so far um I could work on the flower in her hair or I could go over here and work on this rose and then the topiary tree which may be what I'll do there is some more skin I could work on too so all of those are possibilities this is on another really pretty color and cotton fabric called Stonehenge. And this is, um, this is linen. This is not Lugana. This is linen, Stonehenge linen. And it's really pretty greens and purples. And I, I love the garden look of this. So last time I worked on her, I believe I finished off more of her skin and her face might've been done two times ago, but this is a classic um, example of how I start, where I start in the middle, work my way up until I get to her face. So I could work on hair, could work on the topiary tree. So those are some options um, for this one. Really pretty. Again, lots of lots of these with not a lot of progress, <laughs> but they're all pretty. So. Doo -doo 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 rolling up and almost all of these are on a fat quarter of fabric because usually with mirabilias you can get away with a fat quarter if it's on 32 count some of them are just a little bit too big for that if you're going to do it on 28 so you need to go up to a fat half and then there are a few patterns that need a fat half regardless which one of mine is on a fat half but most of these are 32 are on a fat quarter so my next one is stargazer and this is a really fun one and I finally have all the stars in the sky finished so now I'll just get to focus on her which is really exciting and I've seen a couple people finish this in the last few years I know Anne P of Fiber Floss and Fiction finished hers and Jesse Marie does stuff finished hers in the last couple years both of them um and they're really gorgeous and they're actually not that large um there's a lot of dress but Compared to some Mirabilia's, it's not super big. So even though I've only got like that much finished, um, the bulk of the stitching is left. All of this was kind of hard to count. So this may go faster. So this is maybe a candidate for a uh, focus on a finish. Um, I did a color conversion. I, I dyed my own fabric, dark blue, and then I'm converting her to be me. So I have her hair is light brown, and her rib bow ribbons, 
I think I changed, right now they're gray, I think I changed them to be the, the light blue of the front of her dress, which is the only thing that's staying the same, which is a burgundy jacket, gold ribbons, and um, that might be it. We'll see <laughs> when I pull her out if I'm forgetting another conversion I made, but this is my start on Stargazer. I love her. She's so pretty. So she represents me a lot more. I thought this, the beads would pop a lot more on dark fabric than they did in that cover example of tan. And that didn't seem like a night sky to me. So all the beads are done in the sky. So now I can focus on her jacket. So I have um, her head and, and bow hair bows are finished. I think I even have some beads in here on her neck. But there is some holes here you'll see in her arms. And then obviously lots of holes in her skirt and the tail of her coat. So that's where I can work on actually some stitching. So this is originally 32 count white linen by MCG Textiles, which I dyed with a double dye of denim writ. In case you want to try, um, try that yourself. Everything I found on the bottle and maybe even online that suggested how to get dark colors in using writ. I tried it all. I added, I think, salt maybe and um, hot water, and I baked it. Um, not well, I baked it in the solution and kind of stirred it around and stuff. So there was a lot of I kept it hot um, and rinsed it multiple times when it was done. So it's been rinsed thoroughly. It rinses clear, so I'm not worried about it coming off even though it's so dark. Um, so I'm really, really happy with that. My only, one and only experience dyeing fabric. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> next alphabetically is Summer Queen. And this is probably the least progress of all of my pieces. It's a fairly new start. And I don't even think, I don't even think I got into her, her face yet. So let's see, where is this one? This is on uh, 32 count oyster linen by MCG textiles and all of my uh, seasonal queens are on white and white MCG MCG textiles this one was technically oyster even though it looks white but since it had maybe a slight cast um, of cream in it I decided to use that one for summer so that my winter could be pure white so yeah, very, very little done on this one. Definitely my goal will be to move up to her face. Like I like to do where I start in the middle and work my way up to their, their face. So let's see about that one. This is definitely not a contender <laughs> to be my next Mirabilia finish. Um, my next one though is, even though it's enormous, it has probably the most stitching done on it already. So it is a contender, and I know Julie from Stitching in the Cabin would love me to focus on this one. She, have you finished yours yet? I don't know. My Villa Mirabilia. Julie is either done or almost done with hers, so it's really pretty. This one is on possibly the called for fabric. It looks tan in the picture, but it is willow green Belfast. 32 count, but it is a fat half. It is large. This lady is large, but it is a nice um, yellow green fabric. And here is where she's at now. She Will she fit in? There she is. This is all of her so far. Um, I've been focusing up here in this bush, which is not the most exciting part, but I want it done so I can then move down and finish her skirt and stuff. I have little bits of all the different colors of her skirt started. So like her bodice, I think is all the way done. And then I have yellow, the yellow checkerboard here and the teal and purple stripes here and the pink here, you know, so everything is kind of started because I wanted to see what all the colors look like. But then lately the last little while I did the top border and trying to focus on this bush so I can get that and the pot there to, um, get that done so I can then I can come down here and focus more on her so I think I'll I probably will focus on the pot this time as well so I'll give that as my before picture because um I want to get that done 
there's some beads in there too so that might be fun to get to a point where I can add some beads um so this one although it is enormous and it would take a really long time to finish I do have probably the most stitching finished on it from all of my other compared to all of my other projects that are started so stargazer is a smaller one the mirabilia is probably my largest one <laughs> and they're the two contenders as that will possibly be my next finish so probably not this year for either one of them but they may be ones that i might focus on a little bit more to try to get one of these done my last whip work in progress it's a mirabilia that started is winter queen i already have finished summer and autumn not summer spring and autumn and Christmas the royal, royal holiday which is actually on brown so all the ones that are actually seasons are on white um but I have two finished two of the seasons finished as, as well as Christmas and they rotate on the wall above my desk in our study so I'd like to get the other two seasons done so that they can all have some time to shine so I have summer and winter started winter is a lot farther along than summer She's on 32 count white linen by MCG Textiles. And again with her, I started in the middle, worked my way up, and now her head is all the way finished. And with these summer queens, the head is the top thing. There's nothing else as background. So her head and her crown are all completely finished and beaded. So now I get to work more on, I think last time I actually finished her skin as well. So now I can focus on working on the the throw, the, the the fur throw thing that she's holding, as well as her shoulder dress part so that I can backstitch the rest of her skin. So that'll be nice to be able to start working down on her. So yeah, it's time to go already. <laughs> and I haven't even showed you my new ones, my potential kitted ones. So I will have to pause here and come back after I have lunch and show you the contenders that you get to vote for to pick what I start next. So for you, it'll be two seconds, but stay tuned. All right, so I'm back, had my lunch, and a walk around the neighborhood in a very hot day. <laughs> it's practically 90 out there today, but I'm here now to show you what I have kitted up as far as mir mirabilia go. I have, I believe, seven of these. Um, so your job is to choose one and write in the comments which the title of whichever one that is, and I'll tally them up. And at the end of the week, um, next Monday, when I come back to do my update, I'll choose a winner. And that's the one I will start on the first. So <clears throat> the first suggestion, these are not alphabetical, they're just in the pile. So this is ti uh, Titania, Queen of the Fairies. And... She's really pretty. I have her on um, 32 count Belfast in olive green. So it's a, a medium dusty green color, not the brown that's, that's charted. And I think it's, um, I think the green leaves will still show up well enough and the rest of her I think will pop nicely and make it look more like a woodland scene. So this is a solid color fabric, but it's, I think it's a good, a good choice for her. I have two other patterns in here in my bag to use on this fabric too because it's a ginormous piece of fabric. Um, but both of those are, are lavender and lace. All right, so Titania, Queen of the Fairies is number one, or the first one. I'd rather you tell me the title than the number because I might not remember what the number is. The other one is, I'll take it out I guess. The Cottage Garden Fairy. So a couple fairies here. This is one my mom kitted, uh, gave me a while back and she kitted it up, I think with this brown fabric, um, <clears throat> which is chestnut. And I never wanted it to start it for the longest time. And probably cause I had, I, you know, I had done this, this fairy already. There we go. <laughs> and, um, and then at some point I got some other fabrics and realized Maybe I just don't want to do it on brown. So I ended up repurposing this brown fabric and I put it with a lavender lace pattern I have that'll look really nice on brown. And instead I have this color and cotton um, holiday mint, which 
it's a very quite bright green actually and I think her colors kind of lend themselves to that those greens and I think there's enough enough other shades in her skirt that I think her skirt will still pop because the green shades like here is really the only place that it actually touches the fabric and everywhere else is blue or brown or, or peach and I think or yellow I think it'll look really nice and it'll be more um what do you call it a, a more light-hearted I guess and kind of whims whimsical so this is um holiday mint this is 28 count Lugana so this would be the first Mirabilia that's not on 32 but I think I was gifted this by Anne, um, AMP, Fiber Floss and Fiction for my birthday one time and thought, you know what? I think I'll put that together with that one. Looks like I had a fuzz on here. <clears throat> so that's a pretty one. Potential. So Cottage, Cottage Garden Fairy. Another one I have is Cassiopeia. And this one actually, oh, this is the one with this, that fabric, or I thought I thought I had put this, that the fabric for the other one I thought I put with something else, but it might've been this one, because this is brown fabric too. Um, I think this is Cassiopeia. Yeah, and this one I got, um, it was gifted by Debbie, and she gave me all the DMCs, and this, I don't think she gave this to me. I think I gave brought this from another source. But this is a nice brown um, fabric. And I think what I'm planning to do, I don't care for the background, um, all of this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'll, I'll let her stay on the couch, but I'll just have her on the couch on this brown brown fabric. So that's my, my plan. There we go. So I think her blues and even the gold and red from the couch will like pop off of the brown. So <clears throat> that's my thought on that one. So here's how you spell Cassiopeia. <laughs> if you would choose that one. She's got some pretty, pretty colors. So Cassiopeia. The next one is two that are on the same fabric, or will be on the same fabric. This is Lily of the Woods. Got a lot of fairies here. This is the Dreaming Fairy and is her subtitle. And she reminds me a little bit of this one, Midsummer Night's Fairy is this one back here. And I thought they might be a good companion piece for each other. So I chose some Nightshade by Color and Cotton. It's not the same color as this, but I thought it would look um, really nice um, as a nighttime dreaming fairy. So there's that one. This it looks a little bit purple in the in the picture, but it's really not. It's it's a nice medium dark blue. The other one, let's see. Yeah, so this is Lily of the Woods, and the other one I have on the same fabric is Christmas Elegance. Because I thought that again it would look really nice on here. You show all the stars, like my stargazer would pop really nicely on this. And this is all full coverage down here. Like she's sitting in a yeah, it does look like she's sitting in a big like the back of a sleigh or something. So that's another pretty one. <clears throat> so we have Lily of the Woods or Christmas Elegance on the 32 count linen and nightshade by Color and Cotton. I got a half yard of that because I wanted to do it on. I wanted to do both of those on that. She Color and Cotton had a sale on her fabrics. It was probably a couple years ago now, but I went ahead and kitted up a bunch of these with some of her fabrics because it's so pretty. <laughs> this one is Sabrina. And this one I think my mom kitted up, or no, my, maybe my mother-in-law kitted this one up. <clears throat> with the called for fabric which looks a lot darker than this it's natural which is a beigey color I believe that's what's called for yeah oh natural light linen is what it's called for and this is just natural oh no it is natural light 
yeah <clears throat> so this is what's called for i think i think she um kitted it up on one two three stitch so she got all the beads and the water lilies and it's ready to go my only caveat with this one is i promised terry from terry lee crafts that i would start this with her because she has this one um she's gonna do all of these like hollywood old hollywood style ladies to match her four daughters and so um I told her I'd start with this with her. So Terry, if you, <laughs> if this wins, I need to get Terry's permission to start it. <clears throat> but this is a pretty one. And I have the, the silk even to work on that one. <clears throat> and last but not least is Lily of the Woods, I believe is what this one's called. She's a pretty lady. And I have her for kitted up with Color and Cotton Light Denim, which I thought was a nice light misty blue that out too because it's lily of the mist or lady lady of the mist and i thought that was a nice misty color it's a very pretty pale blue with some modeling i thought that would look really nice with um with this one <clears throat> so lady of the mist is that one so i i kind of am falling in love with all of these right now so i don't think i'd be mad about any of them <laughs> Whatever you pick would be fine. So which one do you want me to start? Um, I'll go through them one more time. So Lady of the Mist. <clears throat> Sabrina. Um, well, that's not going to work. I put this back with all the beads in front so you couldn't see it. Uh, Christmas Elegance, L uh, Lily of the Woods, Cassiopeia, Cottage Garden Fairy, or Tit Titania Queen of the Fairies. So, I've got a hard choice in front of you. So please let me know in the comments what you want me to start on May 1st and I will be tallying them up eagerly and <clears throat> we'll pick a winner um, next Monday. So with that, I'm excited to see what you guys choose and have a wonderful time planning your mania plans if you're going to do anything fun and happy stitching. Bye.